Good morning, everyone. You got your Bibles with you? Ready to rock and roll? I'm going to try that again. Ready to rock and roll? Yeah, hey, hey, okay. If you got your Bibles, go to Acts chapter 19. We're going to open up there and start there. And uh, I'm going to touch on a few things we mentioned last week and kind of continue into something new this morning as well. You know, I love every Sunday. It's progressive, right? Everything that the Lord wants to do in your life is progressive. Even getting to know Him, it's progressive. And uh, so I'm excited to get into His Word uh, together as a family and just see something about Jesus we've not seen before. So your eyes open. You ready? Yes. Ready? Your, your heart's open. Yes. Your mind's ready to change if it needs to change. Yes. Man, I'm willing. Lord, if I need to change, I'm willing to change. That's the best way. And if you feel stuck, the best way to feel unstuck is just to say, I'm willing to change. Because hmm. sometimes people say, oh, I don't like change. No, part of the reason is you don't like change is because your personal preferences haven't changed. You just got to go with the flow a little bit. You got to just open up your mind to see different things and be okay with it. Right? Because how many you know, you, I mean, you got a, a, the new iPhone 8 is coming out. iPhone 10 is coming out. It's annoying. I was just, I just got the newest, latest updated version, but now the newest one comes out again. So I'm always behind the curve, but hey, I'm willing to change. So if anybody has an iPhone 10 that they want to change with me, I'm, I'm open for it. So that's just out there. But I want to just again rem remind you what the Lord has told us as a church family about this entire year being decontaminate. Remember, decontaminate. And he said these words, I am removing blockages and clutter through clarity of my word and a yielding to my spirit so that you can walk closely with me. Now, I don't know about you, but I desire a close walk with God. I want to be closer with Him than I was last year. I want to be closer with Him in this upcoming year than I've ever been before. And part of that is, is I need to get clarity in His Word, and I need to yield myself to His Holy Spirit. Right? So many people ask, oh, I want more of you, God. Well, how does that happen? How can He give more of Himself to you? He's already gave you the Holy Spirit. He's given you Jesus. He gave you everything that you'll ever need. So what does it require? It's now you and I, clarity through His Word and the yielding to His Holy Spirit. Right? And so that's what we're after. So again, that's what we're going to do. When we open up these scriptures, and you may have read them before, but look at them as if you've never seen them before. Look at them with fresh eyes going, all right, I'm ready for this. All right, you good? Okay, good. Acts chapter 19. And uh, this is the question that was asked, uh, actually by a demonic spirit of all things. And he asked this question, who are you? And that's a really good question. Who are you? Mind if somebody would ask you if, you know, right after the service, I mean, we got a friendly bunch and somebody walked up to you and say, who are you? And we would list off of, you would list off a bunch of different things. Well, my name is this and I was born and raised in Red Deer, Alberta. And you, you can start talking a lot of natural things and say, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a Calgary Flames fan and, but I'm an Eskimos fan. So I'm kind of in contra, you're, you're saying all these natural things, which is good, but it's not actually who you are. Some of you may have got a little offended. What? No. I bleed green if you're a Saskatchewan Rough Rider fan. No, you don't. I will poke you after service and we'll find out it's red. All right. Okay, but Acts 19, look at this here. And this is verse 13. And again, a little bit of a quick understanding. This is right after the Apostle Paul went. And they had a amazing Holy Spirit blowout where God just showed up and did amazing things in this place called Ephesus. Right? And so what actually happened, you look at verse 11. God gave... Paul the power to perform unusual miracles when handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled Woo! you can see I, I read that I go man that's God's desire to get people well that's his passion about getting the, any kind of demonic force off of people he hates it and then verse 13 this is a group of Jews were traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits they tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. <laughs> now, that we laugh at that. Sometimes we actually believe in a Jesus that somebody else knows. We believe, I be in the name of Jesus, who Pastor Joel preaches, come on out. <laughs> we have, these guys are trying to live off a relationship that they've seen Paul and Jesus had. They're trying to live off that same relationship. It can't be done. It's impossible, and in fact, that's where a lot of frustration is, is people are seeing other people have this relationship with Jesus, and it worked for them, but it's not working for me. How come this, this thing must not be real? It's because he desires a relationship just with you. That's right. Separate, it's just for you. Yeah. So these, verse 14, seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, just that key word, they tried it, the evil spirit replied. Now, you're... 
you don't know who you are. When they reply, you, you got some problems, right? <laughs> now, as I said, it's kind of comical, but it's also real sad. One time they tried this, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? And without even a chance to say anything, the, the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. <laughs> Shoot, okay. Now, how many times even thinking about this, like even Christians in their own, own walk with God, they're trying to see things happen, desiring things to happen. In the name of Jesus, I just call this and I'm, I'm speaking healing over my body. And they're not seeing anything happen. It's a very frustrating place to be. I mean, listen, when times, hard times come, tough situations come, the question that you won't, that will always be asked, and you, it may not come this way, who are you? But it will always be challenging your identity. Who are you? And if all we're saying is, I'm a Rough Riders fan, man, you are in big trouble. And it has nothing to do with the Rough Riders. If you're saying, I'm a football fan, I'm a hockey fan, I go to this church even. Oh, I'm part of Impact Life Church. You can't touch me. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. Who are you? That's what we're going into. And as I said, a few things that we really identify and people identify with is a lot of natural things. Their nationality and race. You can't say, well, I'm Canadian. That's why this demon should leave. Or that's why this problem in my life should take off. It has nothing to do with that. Or your race. Nothing to do with it. Your religion or a particular belief or who you voted for. Now, I know this is common sense, but some people actually have heard say this, so I'm just going to go over it. So now here's the thing. People even identify with their calling. Well, I'm a pastor, so this shouldn't be happening to me. No, 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 no. That's, that's not who I am. This is what I carry out. This is part of my call, but this is not who I am. Again, who are you? Well, I, I'm, I'm a firefighter. Great, you got big biceps. How's that going to change anything in your life? Right? Some people even do it on my health. They identify with their health. They, the experiences that have happened to them, they identify with those. Genetic determinisms, meaning what my parents, what my parents did to me, what my teachers did to me. This is what happened to me. This is part of my genetics. I just can't help it. This is the way that I am. Or even they identify with their education or their lack of it. All these things are true, but that's not actually who you are. So what we're getting into is, so when you get faced with the question, who are you, you have an answer to say, and so that you can boldly stand on that and see results happen in your life. Everything in life goes back to your identity. Now, as we said in that, uh, talking about attacks, I mentioned this last week, but every attack from Satan is an attack on your identity. Every attack from the enemy is an attack against your identity. That's what he's after. He tries to question your sonship. Now, the reason is, I'm going to actually get you, this isn't on the screen, but Isaiah chapter 14, I want you to turn there for a sec because I want to show you what he's after. He wants what you have, but he can't get it. What do you have? Sonship. I'm like God. I'm just like him. That's what he wants. That's what he's after. And he can never get it, so that's why he's after it. Now, notice, like, listen, he tried to get what you have and watch what happened to him. Isaiah chapter 14 and uh, look at verse 12. And this is talking about Lucifer. And it says, you guys there, you're good? It says, how you, have, how you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the Most High. Verse 15, instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest depths. So what did he say with his mouth? I will be like the Most High. What did you say when you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I confess that Jesus is my Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Change me. Make me a new man in you. I believe. I trust you. I take you. You take me as your child. I belong to you. I'm yours. I'm, I'm all in. What happened at that point? You became just like him. Now, you said these exact same words that the enemy said, that Lucifer said. He said, what happened to Lucifer? Where is he going? He got kicked out. Right? And at the same time, his whole destiny is designed for hell. That's where he's going. Now, you and I, we said the exact same words, just in a different format. And what happened to us? We got the open arms. 
We got welcomed. We got accepted in the beloved. He took us right in and said, my son, welcome. Now, this is what he's after. He can't get that sonship. So guess what he's going to try to do? He's going to do everything he can to distract you off of who you already are in Jesus and try to get you focusing on external things. That's his role. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Every time an attack comes against you, know this, it's after your identity. Now, if you know that, then you can look at every, uh, uh, every problem, every situation as an opportunity to prove my sonship. You hearing me? Every attack that comes against me is an opportunity to showcase that I am a child of God. Because listen, why does God hear me? Because I'm His child. Why does He do for me what He does for me? It's because I'm His child. The same way, just think of it naturally, parents. The same way, if your kids need something, if your, parent, if your kids are in trouble with something and they need it picked up somewhere, man, you are in the car and you are going after them. Right? That's naturally speaking. How much more a heavenly Father who loves you, created you, desires you above all things when He hears the cry of His people? Think about it. And we kind of look at these things, oh, I wonder if God's trying to teach me something. God's not trying to teach you anything. The way He teaches you is through His Word and through His Spirit. When tough times come, it's an attack against your identity. Every time an unanswered prayer, or you think this prayer is not working, it's not happening, He's going, I thought that you were a child of God. I thought you prayed for this. How come it's not actually working for you? Well, it must, must not be for you. It must be for somebody else. He must not love you the way that He likes somebody else. What's that? An attack on your identity. That's all that he's after. And Romans chapter 8 and verse 19, I want to show you this on the screen amplified. But I want to just see this. This is what all creation is longing for. It says, even the whole creation, all nature, what, are they, what is it doing? It's waiting expectantly and longs earnestly for God's Son to be made known, waits for, for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. This whole creation is waiting for your man, for the manifestation of the sons of God to step up. Who is that? That's us. How are we going to do this? We got to know who we are. We got to know it. Jesus walked this earth. We wonder, man, three and a half years of ministry, what he did on this earth. He changed the entire world, all the things that he did. What was it about him? It's he knew who he was. That's it. He knew who he was. He knew he, he could stand before the Father as if he'd never done a thing wrong. He knew that he had the Spirit of God living in him. He said, the, it's not me, it's the Father within me that does the works. He knew, he knew, he knew who he was. And the same thing, who are you? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when somebody asks, who are you? If a tough time comes at you, a situation comes at you, what are the first things that come out of your mouth? That dictates actually what you think you are. Man, squeeze anybody, you'll find out what they really are like. I can just come here and switch it. Ow, I'm the, why would you? And you just get a whole lot of responses, right? Simply because when the pressure comes, man, then you start really finding out this is the identity. This is who I actually am. And we're going to talk about that uh, this morning, talking about labels. Hoorah. And uh, just an example, Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 through 6. This is right after Jesus' baptism. I remember when the heavens opened up, what did God say from heaven? This is my beloved son. In Him I am well pleased. Did Jesus perform any miracles at that, till, till that time? He had done nothing. He'd done nothing yet. <laughs> and the Father still, the, the heavens opened up and God yelled down, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Do you believe that about yourself? Yeah. Man, the moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, these exact same words are being spoken over you. You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Do you believe that? Yeah. Now it's easy to say it in church. Yes, I believe that. But I'm talking about Monday. And then all of a sudden the Tuesday when the fight happens with the spouse. Or Wednesday, things going on with your kids. And the Thursday, your boss freaks out at you. Do you still believe that? Now I'm not talking mental. We got to get out of this mental state. Because as long as we know it here, it is not going to do anything for us down here and out here. You got to get rooted on the inside. Now, Matthew chapter 4, and I'm going to, again, I'm just showing you the attack of the enemy, how he operates. He said, during that time, the devil came to him, this is when he's in the desert, and said to him, what's the word that you see there? If you are the Son of God. What, what just happened a little while ago? The heavens opened up, and what did God say? You are my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. If you are the Son of God... 
tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now let me just throw this out here. Just because you can turn stones into bread does not make you a child of God. How many times, if you are a child of God, why don't you try this out and see if this happens? Just because you do something does not prove you're a child of God. It has nothing to do with it. Again, we're looking at external things. How can we prove that you're a child of God? Okay, that's why we're talking about this. It's because what did he say? you got to go back to what the Word of God says. God said it. That means that's who I am. If, again, we're looking at something external to prove that we're a child of God, we've missed it. What has God said? What has He told you? What has He said in His Word? What do you believe in the Word of God to be true? That belongs to you. Now, verse 5, Jesus told him, No, the Scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to a holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. And as Mr. Hub said, Well, devil, you first. <laughs> For the scripture said, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Now notice again, what did he say? If you are the son of God, jump. If you are. Again, he's trying to get proof. He's trying to get Jesus to prove himself that he is the son of God. Listen, Jesus doesn't need any proof. He's already heard it. He knows it. Same thing with you. Well, then this is what the whole, I mean, 1 John chapter 3 talks about. Beloved, now we are the children of God. And the world does not yet know us because it didn't know Him. Listen, you can go around, I'm a child of God. And the world would look at you and go, you're nuts. Yes, because they don't know Him. That's who you are. You're completely different. So trying a child of God, trying to fit into a world system is stupid. It doesn't work. It's two different kingdoms, two different operations going on. Right? Okay. Now, as we said, every attack that comes to you is an opportunity to reveal your true identity. So whatever happens to you, you got to run back to this sonship identity. This is who I am. This is what he calls me. Listen, because the enemy, he's coming after. He, he has schemes. He has tactics. And if we don't come back and run back to this identity that he's given us, he'll then at the same time, he'll outsmart you. Anybody ever been outsmart by the devil before? Yeah, I have. And now how can we now make sure that we're not outsmarted by him, but we understand how he works is I know who I am in Christ. I know my identity. I know what God has says about me. That's how I stay on top and I stay in front. Okay. Now, the importance of our identity, and this is what I want to get into. As we said last week, only God, your creator, can answer the question, who are you? Why? Because he's your creator. Remember I brought up our three amazing... Amigos up here that, uh, you know, they did the Lego thing and they, they created something out of this Lego. Now, who could properly identify what they had just built? Was it somebody out from the crowd or was it somebody or was it them who actually made it, who created it? Them. Why? Because they created this thing. Right now, I want to just show you one other little thing here too. Just talking about labels. Don't worry if anybody doesn't like peanut butter. It's sealed, unopened. I just wanted to bring it because I wanted to show you how healthy our family eats. This is actually real peanut butter. We don't do the other stuff anymore, which has been a real hard transition for me. Okay. <laughs> this is the one. This one will make you smuck till you lose every tooth in your mouth. It's, it's horrible. Listen, you think it's bad? Wait till they give a four-year-old. Put load, my wife loads a bunch of peanut butter on an apple for him and listen to him eat. <laughs> I'm willing for him to starve so I don't have to hear that sound. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously. Okay. Uh, before I just, just show this little thing here. <laughs> Some of you are excited. I'm going to eat peanut butter this morning. Yeah, no, no. Uh, no, not this morning. Uh, but John chapter 1. I wanna, do you have that scripture on there, guys? John 1 verse 12 and 13. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Now, this has actually been an eye-opening thing for me, that I'm not the result of a heated night between my folks. <laughs> they were instrumental, but that's not, the, that's not actually what the Bible says. <laughs> now, we're not, we're not going to be talking about the sex word today. We're going to just, I want you to see this. You're actually born from him. 
The message trip uh, paraphrase, I want to read this to you. It says, Whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed to be, and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God's selves. These are God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. God begotten. It's a whole new identity. You've accepted Jesus Christ. Listen, I know we live in this natural world, but we have, we've identified way too long with natural things. We are born from above. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a child from above. That's what the Bible teaches. And again, as we wrote Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, because we're born from Him, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us brand new in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Listen, you had to be made new. And I mean, we're going to talk about a scripture, but God didn't heal your spirit. He had to kill that thing. It was so full of sin, so full of darkness, so full of the enemy. He actually had to put everything that was in you, that darkness, that evil, that sin, he put it all on Jesus and he absolutely killed Jesus with it. He put it all on him. God, Jesus is the only man that God has ever sent to hell. Why? Because that old man had to be crushed. It had to be killed. But when Jesus rose up, there's a brand new species that never existed before. Jesus is the firstborn among the dead. Now what happens when you acknowledge Him or confess Him, you get included right with Him. Yeah. Now we're part of that new identity. And so in order to do the good things that He planned for us long ago, we need a new nature. Listen, what God has called and planned for you to do it is mind-boggling. But you can do it because you're part of His masterpiece. Because you've been created new. You're not just doing it with your natural limitations. It, listen, you're, you're limited here. But on the inside, you're huge. Huge. All right, all right. You knew what I was throwing down. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I was spending some time praying about this yesterday. And the Lord, I'm going to tell you the sentence the Lord gave me. But I want to just show you just an example. Anybody, you know, go, anybody enjoy grocery shopping? Man, I do when I'm hungry. Man, my, I get the good stuff, right? You get the, whoo, get the good bag of chips. You know, your wife giving home a celery. It's like, that's going to frustrate me. I'm going to just be hangry by the time I'm done with that. So, man, we go and we, I mean, it's, it's only good when I can go and there's not a list. I mean, we had, we had a nice little experience this past week where I went and I didn't pick up the right noodles. Lord have mercy, you pick up the right noodles. <laughs> I don't think you can preach anymore. <laughs> but anyways, Jamie came home with this brand new peanut butter. She said, you're going to love this. Ah. Right away, you go to the back. Okay, yeah, okay. Fats, 15%. Okay, praise the Lord. Sugar is two grams. Two grams of sugar? Who's that going to bless? <laughs> but anyways... <laughs> Am I, am I right? <laughs> Said every man. <laughs> the women are like, no, go with this. <laughs> but you see, you see, what do you see on here? It's a, a label, right? I, I said it about eight times, so label. Now, why is this particular label on this jar? To, sorry. <laughs> to tell us what's on the inside of the jar. Nah, nah, but you know what? I think this would be a much better fit for all of us if we could just. But there we go. I, I'm actually just going to relabel this because this would be way more blessing to anyone who came in contact with it. I just, you know, all I did was I just relabeled it. So this, this is now Nutella. Who wants some Nutella? This is, this is the real stuff right here, all right? And all of a sudden, what happened? You would open it. And you'd be like, this isn't Nutella. No, 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 but, but the jar, the label says Nutella. But how come if I'm opening it up? Well, you know, it, <laughs> it's peanut butter. Why, why is that? I, I labeled this Nutella, so shouldn't it be Nutella? No, we, the label is just strictly to showcase what's on the inside. Now, what would be wrong if a grocery store just had this sitting up there? You know, the clerk kind of sit behind her, <clears throat> hope they get it. <laughs> right, all of a sudden they pick it up. That would be false advertising. Right, all of a sudden you open it up. You're expecting, you know, just to put some really sugar-free 
peanut butter on top of your apple, the, and you're, or sorry, you're expecting to put Nutella on this beautiful piece of toast, and all of a sudden what happens is you open it up and it's peanut butter, you get frustrated. The label's wrong. Well, that's, you know, how much more our Heavenly Father, who actually has put already everything on the inside of you, what have you allowed to label you? Externally. Like, just because I put this thing on here, does that make it Nutella? No. Why? Because you have to look to what's on the inside of the jar. Now, the same way, how dare you and I take labels, receive labels, or put them on ourselves when God Himself has actually filled us with Himself full of Jesus. And we're putting all these labels, well, I'm just, you know, I'm an ex-con, or I'm a, I'm a divorced person, or I'm a bad parent, or I'm, a, I'm just full of soul of sickness, I'm just full, soul of, full of disease. You're putting labels on yourself that God never installed on you. Now, we would get mad at a grocery store if we came up and we saw across this. Well, I wanted to tell them it's got peanut butter. Well, how much more your Heavenly Father, who put you together, who created you anew in Christ Jesus, and you just receive labels from where, whoever they want, from wherever, from whatever comes your way. Oh, we're fine with that. No! Take those labels off. Who put them there? Who told you? That you are a divorced person, there's no chance for you. Who told you that? Because as long as you hang on to those things, and that's how now you are living your life with stupid labels that are put on you that nobody, but I mean, God Himself didn't put these on you. Because listen, if God put this on you, that would be it forever. He's eternal. But if you just put on these random labels on yourself and walk around, well, this is just who I am. I just live sick all the time. Man, get, shake your head a bit. That's not who you are. You're living in this external thing here when God's saying, I need you to live from the inside out. And that's where religion comes in because religion, again, is so good on the external. You know, you got to throw this on. you got to patch that up a little bit over here. No! You live from the inside of the jar and it comes out. What am I? I am peanut butter. So did anybody throw Nutella on me? No, I'm actually going to give you peanut butter because that's what I got. This jar can't give you anything else but peanut butter. Now, what nature is on the inside of you? God's very own nature lives on the inside of you. It's there. So what labels are, I mean, good meaning people, counselors, school teachers, principals, universities, your boss. What are they throwing on you that you've just accidentally, you just, you've just taken on? This is part of my identity. You know how many times people say, well, this is part of my life. Why is it part of your life? It's a stupid label. That's all you got to do. Get rid of that thing. Now, the reason passion mode is because now the good works that God has called us to do are hindered because you've labeled yourself. You've allowed labels that should not be on you to stay on you, and therefore you live your life. Because Proverbs, this is my next point, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What do you think about you? How are you thinking about you? When you wake up in the morning, go, oh, here, here comes the walking mistake again. Come on. When God put everything inside of you from Jesus, you're identifying with an external thing again. Because your thoughts, your words, your actions is all the result of how you see yourself. How you're living. How do you view you? Right? Okay. Praise the Lord. Your life right now is the direct result of how you are seeing yourself. How you are being a spouse to your husband and to your wife is a determinant on how you're seeing yourself. How you parent is how you see yourself. The Lord had to teach us that one pretty quick. Because, man, I, like, there are certain expectation things that I'm, I'm expecting in Jace because I'm actually not seeing them in myself, so I'm putting the expectation on him. Wrong. So I'm identifying from a place of my external, I need to see this, I need to have this happen, rather than just flowing from the inside out. You're actually a friend towards people based on how you view yourself. You're part of this local family based on how you view yourself. So do everyone a favor and start seeing yourself the way God sees you. Because as long as you see seeing you the way that you are, you're still going to be the most selfish person. Be so focused on self, just me. It's all about me. So focused this way because of what's this way, rather than when you get to know who you are in Christ Jesus, you can't help but come out. That's how it is. 
So people are going, oh, man, how can, I, how can I do what you guys are doing? And, you know, go and reach out to people. Get an identity of who Jesus is on the inside of you. Therefore, going out to reach somebody, it just comes naturally. It's because it is your natural person. It's on the inside. It's who you really are. Cool? Okay. <laughs> now, lastly, so we talked about the first one, just your label. This one being about how you see yourself as how you'll behave. And thirdly, this is why I touched on it last week, but it locates you. Knowing who you are locates you. Now, anybody, you know, spend time at West Edmonton Mall before? Oh, lots of men's hands. That's what I'm talking about. All right, men. Uh, but, you know, when you're looking for, you know, Claire's men, when you're looking for that store, I'm just looking at Josh for a sec because he likes Claire's. <clears throat> Sometimes they have two-for-one ear piercings, and that's, he's all over that. So, anyway. <laughs> I just had to say it. Josh is, every time we go to the mall, he's always asking, where's Claire's? Josh is my cousin. Josh, why don't you just, just throw up your hand for a quick second? Oh, he's not. He's the guy in the white shirt that's just kind of slowly going underneath his chair. Yeah, that guy right there. We go into a mall. Hey, where's Claire's? That's the first thing he's looking for. So, anyways, <laughs> that's not all true. It's mostly Sam, the cousin that's next to him. That's the one that does it. So. <laughs> But when you go into this mall, you're like, this mall is gigantic. I have no idea where any store is. All this, I look for the boat because that's my frame of reference. Is this big, gigantic boat that I would love to actually jump into the water and just swim around for fun. But uh, I won't because it wouldn't be good. And my wife would say no. Okay, anyways. <laughs> but you know, they, sometimes they have those big signs, right? And it just kind of shows the whole mall locations of where everything is at. But on this thing, it says, you are here. I love those signs. <laughs> it locates me. I can go, okay, if I want to get to Claire's. <laughs> if I want to get to Claire's. <laughs> okay, so I just need to, okay, I'm right here. So you know how you kind of arrange yourself to how you, okay, so I'm facing, okay, I'm facing this way. Okay, if I just go this way up, I find Claire's. Okay, so I'm going to just start going and okay. Oh, there it is. It locates you. Well, the same way in the spirit realm, knowing who you are in the spirit directs your destiny and your calling in life. Knowing who you are. People are trying to figure out what am I called to do to be on this earth. Here I am. What's my calling? You can never know your call apart from knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because it locates you. This is, oh, there you are, right there. That's who you are, right here. That's it. You look in the Word of God. That's, that's my location. Okay, this is who I am right now. For an example... When tough times arises, some people are looking for victory. How can I win in this situation? Okay, okay, what do I do? I got, I'm trying to figure this out. How can I do this? So they spend time, they go to God in prayer going, Oh God, I need victory. Show them what, what do I got to do? What, what's my position? Well, how do I do this thing? How do I get out of this, this tough circumstances? And this is one of the things the Lord helped me. Stop. Look. Listen. Same way, any of you men ever asked for directions before? <laughs> you ask for directions, but you don't actually want to listen. Because I remember I had directions, Jamie's sitting beside me. I got directions, and I'm like, okay, where are we going again? I have no idea what he just said. I stopped, but I didn't look, nor did I listen. Right? I'm just doing things, figuring out, man, I got to the bathroom or something. Right? You're not, you're not paying attention. Any men, I mean, is it just me? Okay, any woman in the house that do that too? Okay. Oh, yeah, Wendy. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, there we go. But stop when you're trying to find Claire's in the mall. It's useless for you to just walk around everywhere trying to find that pink sign. Where is that pink sign? The mall is gigantic. So what's the best thing to do? Stop. Look. Well, and, yeah, listen to yourself. But when it comes to the things of the Word of God, when you're trying to, rather than just, okay, God, I need this. I need a, how can I move forward? You have to stop and realize where you already are. You are not trying to get victory. You already have it. So now how do I go about doing this? How do I handle this situation? Because listen, people are praying for things that you already have. Christians are already praying about some stuff that they already possess. Listen, when God filled you up, He filled you up with Himself to the complete with everything that He is. So we've been praying for a lot of things that we think that God hasn't given us yet. So that's why we have to stop, we have to look in the Word, and we got to listen. What does it already say? Well, let me just give you an example in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Just turn there for a moment. 
You need victory in a situation. People spend time praying, God, I need victory. I need this. How do, how do I go about this situation? But in verse 57, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, Thanks be unto God, He gives me victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What is that? But thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in our Lord Jesus Christ. That is an identifying scripture. That is my position. Stop. Look. Okay, I already have the victory in this situation. Now how do I go about this? Lord, show me. Have I already got the victory? Now show me what I got to do. Remember, sonship is your identity. Something comes at you. Something comes against you. An attack hits you. And the first thing people look at, oh God, I need help. What do I do in this situation? I, Lord, I need to see breakthrough. I need breakthrough. I need victory. I got to see it. Stop. What does the word say? Thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You're not trying to get victory. You already have victory. So now you start operating from that place of I already got it. We spend way too much time trying to get something from God. He already gave it. He already did. It's part of your identity. You don't have to try to anything. You already got it. So when you understand I already got it, now, instead of my prayer being off, going against what the Word already says, now I work in line with Him going, Lord, I need wisdom on this situation. And James chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. So rather than thinking, I need victory. No, you don't need victory. You need wisdom. Oh, Lord, I need a healing in my body. Is that what you need? Because the Bible already says that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. So you need to ask Him, what does He say? What is he already saying? Because we're just throwing things out there thinking we need stuff when it's already yours. It's already part of your identity. We think you just got saved and that was just my fire insurance, meaning I missed hell and I just go to heaven, that's it? No! He didn't want you just to just miss hell. He came that you would, he would invest heaven on the inside of you so that you'd be a powerhouse here. As long as we're still in this needy place of, oh, I need this from God and I need that. We're missed it. Jesus paid way too high of a price for you and I to be in this constant place of need. He met it. So now we got to understand what the word says about us, who I am, what does he say, and I live from that reality. That's what it is. That's identity. Everything about it, this is an identity attack. The enemy is after your identity, so you're going to try to go get this, and you need more of that. No, 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 you already got it. Yeah. Say, I already got it. I already got it. I, already got it. <laughs> I don't have to fight for it anymore. I already possess it. Now I need some wisdom on how to do this. That's all that it is. Do you see anywhere in the New Testament where it says, pray for God to give you victory? No, but he talks about wisdom over and over and over again. It could be that you're not seeing it. But it does not mean that you don't have victory. Listen, if you are a son of God, this is what 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1 through 5, I believe it's verse 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. This is the victory. And he says before that, in verse 1, he said, anyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ already overcomes the world. You're not trying to be an overcomer. What do you have to do to be an overcomer? One thing, believe in Jesus. What happened? You are a world overcomer. Now, how do I see that manifest? It's not by me asking God, God, help me be an overcomer. No. Again, you got to go back to your identity. I'm already an overcomer. So if I'm not seeing victory in my life, okay, Lord, this is the victory that overcomes the world, my faith. Okay, Lord, show me in your word what I need to believe and stand on your word to be true in my life. What do I need to see? And he'll show you a scripture. You stand on that. Okay, yeah, this is the situation I'm going through, but... This is what the Word says, so I'm going to just believe this because this is who I already am. <sighs> Man, that's grace. <laughs> Your striving is done. Colossians chapter 3, and I've got to hurry up here. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. It says, For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. So where is your life? Your real life. It's in Christ, in God. We know Acts chapter 17, verse 28, it says, For in Him we live, we move, and we have our being. Your entire existence is in Christ, which is hidden in God. It's where it is. It's, it's all there. But here's the thing. When you look at this scripture, there's two things you got to do. you got to identify also with that I actually died to this life. 
Like not only are you, is your life hidden with Christ and God, but it's also I died to this life. So let me just tell you what you're dead to. You okay? You want to know what you died to? Yeah. Number one is you died to sin. You died to it. Romans chapter 6. I don't have the, the scriptures for this. So you're going to have to be old school and flip around. Romans chapter 6 and verse 2. It says, or I'll just read verse 1. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of His wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Look at verse 7. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Verse 11. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. What did you die to? You died to sin. What does it mean to be dead? Cease to exist. You're not, you moved out that neighborhood like this. Let's say you used to live in Sin Road. You actually died in Sin Road and Jesus brought you out and put you in a new place. It'd be stupid for me to go back to that mailing address and try to hang out there. I'm, I'm actually dead to that. He gave me a new home in Heaven Avenue or something like that. <laughs> Number two. I also died to the law. Now, this is big. You died to the law. So you died to sin. You also died to the law. Look at Romans chapter 7, verse 4. It says, So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. Now, look at Galatians chapter 2, and verse 19. <clears throat> it says this, For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. How many have ever been operated under the law? Where you haven't prayed long enough. You weren't church long enough. You didn't spend time in the Word long enough. You should be listening to messages 24 hours a day. All these things you're trying, there's an expectation on you to do something that's totally impossible to do. And because you didn't fulfill it, you've now condemned yourself. The law condemns. This we just read. Right? For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all of its requirements so that I may live to God. If you're still living under this, do this, don't do this, act better system, you're actually not living for God. You gotta be nicer. You gotta talk better. It's, I mean, I love this. Actually, Aaron, Aaron you say this a lot. It's not just your, uh, it's not a behavior modification where you're just trying to act better to be a better Christian. No, because that actually means that you're not actually living for God. Why? Because you're stuck under the law. You're stuck trying to do a work to try to impress God. So Paul just simply said, I've stopped trying to meet all the requirements of what that law says so that now I can leave it and I actually can now live for God. Why? Because again, it's from the inside out. So you died to sin, you died to the law, and thirdly, you died to the world. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 20. You guys doing okay? This is, is, this is being helpful? Like you're able to take this and do something with it? Okay, look at verse 20. It says, You have died with Christ, and He has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. Then he goes on, so why do you keep on following the rules of the world such as don't handle this, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. So if you've died to the world, you can live for Christ. Those are the things you've died to. Now part of it, what I've, what's also helped me, not just realize, okay, this is who I am in Christ, but this is actually what I'm completely dead to. So if anything tries to come up from sin, try to come up from the world, try to come up from the law, I can identify those things and go, no, 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 no. That is not who I am anymore. I'm actually dead to that sin when all of a sudden those alcoholic things trying to come back up and trying to, trying to attach itself to me. Well, you should be drinking again. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's how you get more buddies. No, no, no. That's not how I am anymore. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, who am I? And he starts to identify. Jesus can work with that. But as long as we're just jumping at every whim here, it's his voice becomes silent. It's not that he's quieting down. It's because these voices are so strong. These labels that we've placed on ourselves or we've allowed other people to put on our, us, 
they become so loud that God's voice has become so quiet. And His truth, now when you hear it, you go, yeah, the, I know that, but it's not actually real in my life because we're not experiencing it ex externally. And this whole Christian life, there's two parts of this, and we'll talk about this next week. There's two parts of this thing. There's a positional truth. It's what you have. It's what God has already done in you through Christ Jesus. Right? You, you have that. Did God ask you permission when you accepted Him to put everything that He has on the inside of you? Did He ask you, hey, can I give you healing? Can I give you victory? Can I give you blessing? Can I give you peace? Can I give you joy? He never asked you. He automatically just did it. So that's the positional truth. That's absolute fact. It's in you now. We know that. But the other side of the coin is now the practical. How do I carry out what's already on the inside of me so I see it manifest outside? That's where people sometimes have the frustration. That's what we're going to get into next week. Because that whole point is really living from the inside out, understanding who I am and knowing this new man that God has already created. Yeah, I'll get the worship team. You guys can come up for a moment. And I just want to share this last little bit of... Uh, just scripture. Uh, but here's this quote from Smith Wigglesworth. I love this thing. He said, you need to see how wonderful you are in God and how helpless you are without him. Because your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's all it. So it's no longer you. And I, what I want to do this morning is uh, the worship team just has this, this special, this song. And I want it just to minister to you. Let it just minister to your souls. When I say souls, I'm talking about your brain. Let it just minister to your brain, to the way that you think. Let it just come in and let God just swarm you with his presence for who that he really is. Right? Let's just set our hearts in agreement. Father, we come before you right now. Lord, and the words that we are about to hear, they are straight from your word. And so, Father, right now we choose to under, not only believe it, but help us to understand it and see it with your eyes. We believe we receive it now. In Jesus' name.
like us to do, if there's been things, labels that have actually, maybe you didn't even realize that were on top of you or trying to attach themselves to you. I want this morning, I want you to actually take them and throw them down. That's enough. Who told you you were that way anyway? Are you with me with this? this? We got to go back to what the word of God says, that Jesus said, I came that you may have and enjoy life, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And there's some labels that are blocking some of you that you have got to get rid of. I mean, in order to fulfill everything that God's called you to do, but to enjoy the freedom that he poured his blood out for you to experience. He paid too high of a price for you to be partially free. The goal in all this is complete freedom. So can we just lift our hands this morning? And Lord, right now, if there's any labels that have tried to attach themselves to us, Lord, if we've taken anything, if we said things about ourselves, Lord, show us these things. And right now, by faith in what you've provided for us through Jesus, we're going to cast down these labels, these thoughts, these reasonings that are trying to come against us and hold us back from truly knowing you, from truly pursuing you, from truly being everything that you've called us to be. Jesus, you came and you purchased us with your blood. We are no longer in sin. We're no longer sinners, but we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your word said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old condition has passed away and the fresh and the new has come. So Father, we take hold of that. We lay hold of that and we receive it now in Jesus' name. Oh, sing that out. Chosen. I'm righteously made. I'm blameless in your eyes and in to your grace. I'm perfectly chosen. I'm righteously made. I'm blameless in your eyes and in to your grace. that Pastor Joel gave us this morning is, is this. You were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. He has brought you into his own presence and you are holy, blameless, and stand before him without a single fault. This is through Christ that we... So the only way we are disqualified from being holy and blameless and before our Father without a single fault is if we don't have faith. This is why it is impossible to please God without faith because we can't stand before Him without a single fault. Now, that's to any of you who have never heard this message. We need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need to believe in Jesus. And for all of us who have, the next verse, verse 23 of Colossians 1, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Pastor Joel, I love your passion. That's one of our things here. Passionate. Let's stand firmly in it. That's what it is. Stand firmly in it. Don't let things come against you. Don't let the lies come. Stand firmly in it. 
So you continue to believe this truth. So that's how we came to salvation. And now we stay in a position of salvation. Stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you see received when you heard the good news. Stand in assurance when you received. So thank you, Pastor Joel, for that awesome message. That's good. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, just say this after me. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. My old life is gone. The fresh and the new has come. I am righteous in His sight. I am in Christ. And in Him, I am complete. I am holy. I am set apart. I stand before you, Lord, as if I've never done a thing wrong in my life. Today's a new day. It's a fresh start. Your mercy is new every morning. So I tap into it today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Jesus, I worship you. I exalt you, Jesus. There's no one like you. Oh my God, you're good to me. You're so good to me. You're so faithful to me. Thank you, Lord. Man, and don't let the enemy shut you up. You're free from yourself. You know, one of the best things about what Jesus did is that when you can get free of yourself, you can actually be free to help others. Sometimes the problem with you, you just get so concerned about what people are going to think about me if I shout or raise my hands. Man, get over it. You want to start helping somebody? Get out of yourself and be who God created you to be. Listen, in Jesus, there's no such thing as shy. Don't call your kids shy anymore because there's no such thing as a shy person. In Christ Jesus, is there any shy people in Jesus? Is Jesus shy? No, he's bold. It says, the Bible says, the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, man, we got we to gotta get back to what the book says. Any kind of going off that thing, we become weird. We become natural people again when you're called to be supernatural. Everything about you is supernatural. How God made you is supernatural. How he remade you is supernatural. Everything about your life is supernatural. Don't let the natural world dictate how your supernatural life is supposed to be. Your supernatural world is supposed to dictate how that natural world is supposed to exist. You change your atmosphere. And I mean, everything I'm saying is found in the word. Philemon chapter verse 6, it says, acknowledging every good thing that is in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Start acknowledging it. I'm healed. Lord, I'm, it's so good to be well. Man, everywhere I go, healing just abounds towards me. I thank you. My family lives healed. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet, mentally, physically, we are healed people. Just start talking about it. Same way with your finances. Start saying, I'm blessed everywhere I go. And I go to my job, I'm blessed to be a blessing. My job, my best place of work is going to just flourish because I'm here. Why can you say that? It's because you're not normal. You're recreated in Christ Jesus. That's who we are. So we got to take hold of it. Kind of like what Aaron just saying, stand firm in this truth that we believe. Don't shake off this thing. This is the foundation for everything that you and I believe to be true. This is it. So you're not a sinner. You don't sin. Sinners sin. Righteous folk are righteous. That's just what we do. Amen. Well, I'm done yelling. Amen.
And when he preaches, it's, it's yes, I'm going to take that part home. And that was really good, and that was really good what you said, Pastor. That was really good. You're really good. You know, that's, that's us. Like, oh. I have known Pastor Joel since he was born. And I've known that little girl since she was born because she's mine. But we are an impacting generations for Jesus church. And we're focusing this year on being leaders of every generation. You can sit there and say, well, I'm not, I'm not up there and I'm not doing what he's doing. Well, then you stand and lead yourself and affect everybody in your row and affect everybody around you. And you enter into worship for that part of the church service that we've gathered for. It's not them, it's not him, it's us. It's Impact Life Church celebrating who Jesus is. And this scripture, I'll just read you quick. It's the offering scripture for this part of our worship. It's 2 Corinthians 9. It's verse 7 and 8. Each of you must decide in your own heart how much you can give and give it. Whatever amount you decide to give, give it freely without feeling under pressure because God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to express his unconditional love to you in a variety of ways so that you will always have what you need for every good work. So you're not under any pressure to give. So some people have taken that scripture and said, see, we live in the New Testament. We don't live in the Old Testament. There's no law, and I don't have to do that. You know what? You're right. But could you read this verse and say there's no pressure and tell me that you can't give or that you don't want to give? I don't want to be responsible to tell you what to give. In my mind, the New Testament requires more because it's really personal. This says, could you please have a conversation with me about your money? Could you talk to me about your money? Would you welcome me into your life and talk to me about money? Because then it says, and then you'll have every bit of money that you'll need to give every good work. Because what he's saying is, is I want you to have lots of it. And the, and the way this works is you talk to me and you decide and you look at your money and you see that really is, is better than me saying to you, give 10% because it takes all the pressure off you having to say anything. This is what I got to do and there's no faith in that. But when you have to look at what the word says and, and you have to say, okay, it's not my money anyway, it really makes it personal and it makes you uncomfortable and it makes you look at what you have and what you're spending and where are you spending it and what do you value? It's personal. And then you say, you know what? I need to talk to you, Jesus, and I need you to tell me what to do with my money. It's not about us saying, you better give. It's about you being responsible to have that conversation with your Lord and your Savior. And, and then, you, you know, you'll walk away, you'll give more than 10%. Because then you have to really realize he's the one who provided you with everything that you have. So today, make this part of, make this part of your church life. Make this part of what we do together. Let's honor him. So we're going to pray. And believe God and ushers, please come forward to receive what we want to willingly give. We're not under compulsion. We're we're doing this cheerfully. We've looked at it. So let's pray. Father, Father, I thank you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you've caused us to come here together. Thank you for every person that participates in this service. Thank you that we want to give. And when I, you know what, Lord, I just, when I give to you, I give because I love you. Because I've looked at my finances, I've had a conversation with you. And you honor a cheerful, prompt to do it giver. And then we enter into this partnership and you are able to, you have access to me because I've invited you into that part of my world 
And then I don't need to worry about my money anymore. In Jesus' name we give. Amen. Hello, my name is Shalina, and I want to thank you for coming to Impact Life Church today. If this was your first time here, or if you would like to be contacted about our upcoming events, we have a white connect card that you can fill out from the seat pocket in front of you and bring to the info desk right after the service. Just a reminder to stay after the service today for our Connect Cafe lunch, as well as Discover Impact Life Church. See you there. Impact Red Deer is a chance to show off the love and kindness of God through acts of love. Serve with us on Sunday, October 7th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. as we go out into various parts of the city and impact families. For more information, check out our website. Next Sunday is our team rally. If you are currently serving on any team here at Impact Life Church, then this evening is for you. Come and celebrate all that God has done this past year at 6 to 7.30 p.m. Childcare is provided. Please register online at impactlife.ca. Mark your calendar, set a reminder on your phone. Kevin and Annie Durant will be here at Impact Life Church on Sunday, November the 12th at 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. For more information, check out our website. Once again, thank you for joining us today. See you throughout the week. Awesome. So just a few quick instructions for today. Oh, well, actually, let me give you one for next Sunday. Team Rally, we are pumped about. It's going to be a really fun night. Um, little bit of vision, but a lot of celebration about what God has done and looking forward to the future. That registration was for everyone, not just if you have kids. So if you're coming, please register online. And for today, as you heard, it's our first Connect lunch which is really fun. What is that? That's where you can head into the back if you'd like after and purchase yourself and your family a lunch and get to know someone else in your church family because that was one of our goals today. So if you'd like to join us, I've been told that you can use debit or credit and or cash and you can go through either door. Um, just know our heart is is to serve you and these ladies have been working hard all service to do that and it's our first one. So enough said on that um and then also at 12:45 today is discover impact life church if you have been new in the last however long it could be a day or it could be the last six months you want to know a little bit more about us you want to know a little bit more about our team and the church that's going to be in here at 12:45. bring your lunch if you have to bring your kids and we hope to see you in a few minutes have a great week It was awesome to meet you. Thank, thank you for coming this week. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Are you from Red Deer? Or are you from Red Deer? Oh, awesome. Yeah.